A very good evening and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I'm Kukule Tukele. Well, today in studio, I'm joined by Susan Gayworth, who's a Senior Portfolio Manager uh, at Standard Bank Wealth and Investment, to give us some insights into what the bank has recently launched, which is a women's academy, which uh, will hopefully empower a lot of females out there when it comes to the financial jargon and terminology that's out there on the market at the moment. Thank you so much for joining us today, Susan, and good to have you with us this evening. Perhaps let's get into the Women's Academy. Where did this brainchild actually come from and uh, why teach us about money? Surely we know it all, <laughs> huh? Um, Gugu, thanks for having me on the show tonight. Um, it really started out of our Young Leaders Academy and that came from a demand from our clients to really educate their children about money. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of concern about intergenerational wealth transfer. Nobody wants to have the kid who sort of squanders all the money they've earned so hard over the last few years. And you know, history shows us that the second generation often lose 70% of the wealth sure. um, and the third generation 90%. So once we started on that journey, then we also actually had a demand for a women's academy as well, so that both mothers and also women who ask questions and feel a bit insecure about their ability to manage their wealth mm. um, can be educated in it. So that's how it started. And it certainly comes at a quite poignant time because uh, we know that women just not are not in the kitchen anymore, but uh, yes. becoming financially empowered. And even the changing dynamics when it comes to relationships as well, where people choose maybe not to get married, but to cohabitate. And we understand that there are legal implications when it comes to their financial positions. There. Yes, I think the thing is for women, they play numerous roles. So the one role is as a mother, and that's where part of the concern comes through in terms of raising a sort of financially literate family. Um, but also... Because of, you know, statistically 80% of women die single and 80% of men die married, and that may be for any number of reasons. Um, some people may never have been married, but at the end of the day, most women will need to be able to manage their own finances. Mm. So it's really important that people feel comfortable with it because there is this, this perception that women don't have the skills or not as comfortable or confident about investing as men are. Exactly. So tell us a little bit more about uh, the objective of the Academy when it comes to what it is that you're looking okay. to teach women. Well, the first thing we want to do is really make people comfortable with the ideas and um, demystify some of the jargon. And um, we normally take them through a bit of a macroeconomic um, talk to explaining what's going on in the world and what actually drives the economy and dri the drivers in your investments. How overwhelming is that? Because I mean, usually when we talk about economics and GDP growth figures and the savings rate, uh, for the average woman on the street, that must be quite uh, uh, unusual no, I, to talk about. I think about. you can demystify it to a degree. And I think everybody understands, for instance, they might hear that the oil price is mm. at the, lo the lowest level, um, it's fallen below $30 a barrel, but everybody knows that they pay for fuel and yeah. that that's a big part of the family budget. So I think most things can be tied into your day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. You also uh, speaking to us off air about some of the other terminology that often confuses the average yes. woman, such as bonds. Uh, yes, I mean, we, we, we as financial professionals, you quite often take for granted that people know what you're talking about when you use words like a bonds when I talk about bonds, I'm talking about fixed interest instruments. Mm. The average man on the street would be talking about um, their mortgage. So, you know, I think people are quite confused sometimes by terminology. And that's one of the important things for the people who come to our academies is that they feel comfortable to stop you and ask questions. Um, so that you can explain anything that they don't understand. Mm. Something that also ties in with uh, one of the initiatives of the Academy is a financial roadmap, which I actually think is quite important given the fact that there are different uh, occurrences in yes. one's life and uh, they're, they're key elements that need to be included in one's financial plan. But the typical roadmap for a female, what does it entail? I think, you know, for, it really doesn't make a difference whether you're a man or a woman in terms of what your financial roadmap looks like. But as you say, you go through these stages in your life the first stage is when you're starting to build your wealth. Mm. Um, we talk about lifestyle wealth um, in terms of how much you spend. And I think it's important to remember that some people really spend too much money, even if they have a lot of money. Um, you know, about providing for your retirement and all of those things. And then also what's important is leaving a legacy. Yeah. Um, for most of our clients, that's important. And I think also giving meaning to money because money in itself is, is something that is also a responsibility as well as a privilege. And a mm. lot of our clients are quite interested in philanthropy. So those are the sort of things we, we also add on. 
the average client that we're speaking about here, are they quite uh, uh, well aware of their savings habits and spending trends? Because uh, usually we tend to think that women uh, know how to handle their purse strings. I think, I think that's absolutely true, that the average woman is good at m managing the rands and cents in their day-to-day -day, um, expenditure. And, but I think what women are not as good at is, that, so they tend to, they're quite good at saving, but not necessarily at investing, and that's a different thing. Yeah. Um, so they're not particularly um, good at taking risk, and sometimes your savings can be eroded by inflation and mm. by um, currency depreciation. So that's why it's important to invest as well. I'm glad you touched on that because I know that women also tend to be quite conservative when it comes to their investment outlook. But uh, how is the academy handling that? Educating uh, yes. the average individual about equities and like you said, investments into the bond market and going offshore and how the RAND might mm. influence that. Well, there are, there are so many different kinds of investments and what's suitable for each person, you know, varies. I mean, some clients love art or stamps and things like that are also investments. Mm. Um, then, you know, a lot of your risk profile is something to do with your personality. Yeah. So some people are terribly risk averse. You know, they, they lie awake at night, then they've got the wrong investments. You know, your investments should be correct for you and those change. With, life, with your life cycle, and they also are slightly a function of who you are as a person and how much risk you can take. Mm -hmm. Something else you touched on a moment ago was uh, leaving behind a legacy, uh, which makes me think of estate planning too, which uh, sometimes is uh, one of the critical elements of financial planning that falls by the wayside for a lot of individuals. Yes, I think, I mean, part of your leaving a legacy is about your estate. Um, and, and that, you know, a lot of that will depend on how long you live, for instance, um, and what your financial obligations are before your death. But we also like to think that a lot of people, you're seeing an increasing trend now with philanthropists like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates and mm. stuff, that they actually want to start leaving their legacy while they're still alive. Mm, very true on that one. But to get back to the Academy for the moment, I'm sure there must be a lot of women out there uh, wondering how they can get involved. Uh, does one need to be a Standard Bank client? Yes. Um, you know, the reason for the Academy is really all around our client relationships. So we do it for our clients, wealth and investment clients, um, and, it's, and it's to meet their needs and to also basically to really build on our relationships with our clients. So mm -hmm. we probably wouldn't want to have people who weren't our clients. Uh, lots of people <laughs> might do that conversion and change <laughs> over. But when it comes to terms and conditions, are there fees associated with this and uh, the kind of relationship that one needs to uh, uh, and maintain with the wealth manager? Um, so s the Standard Bank wealth and investment clients have um, a minimum um, investable assets of one million dollars, US dollars, um, which is, well, at the p time it was 12 million rand. It's more like, but more than that now. Um, so the, 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 we don't charge extra for the academy for those clients. Mm -hmm. um, we actually find that we get more value out of clients that went once they've attended the academies because they understand more about the different products that we offer. Mm, precisely. But what about the, the ladies that might be slightly lower on the radar and uh, uh, still familiar with informal savings habits and 32-day accounts? Are, are, are there means and initiatives uh, perhaps to get them to $1 million? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there are a couple of there are a couple of points. The one is that it's really never, you know, it's never too early to start. I think with, because of compounding, it's really important to start investing early. Um, the second thing is that it's really impossible to time time the market. So mm. um, we were looking at some statistics the other day. If you look at the world index over the last twenty years, if you miss the best ten days out of twenty years, your return is halved. So investing sure. is not a short term game. You have to you have to be in it for quite a long period of time, and and particularly for smaller investors, I think the thing is if you put the best way to do it is a monthly savings, but I would say not into a savings account. I really think yeah. buy a unit trust rather, um, something that's going to give you some growth, some inflation protection, some currency protection, and then you get you know you'll smooth some some months it'll be expensive, some months it'll be cheap, mm. and over time it'll grow nicely. I'm so glad you mentioned that because we know that the current market uh, environment that we're living in at the moment is incredibly volatile. Uh, we're seeing a significant sell-off across global equities everywhere and everyone also says that SA equities are in trouble. Uh, for the average individual out there who's too scared to get into the market, like you said, you can't no. time it, but uh, is it ever too late? Is it ever too soon? And again, I take it this goes to seeking adequate advice. Don't yes. necessarily think, go it alone. I think it is, um, you know, if you are, if you can't afford, if, you, if you're a real 
low cost investor, then you can do a lot of research online. Um, otherwise, get professional advice. But I think you know the market is incredibly gloomy at the moment, mm. and we know that it's been gloomy before, and you know things do change. So I think it's important. I think I always liken it to standing on the edge of a swimming pool, and you don't know whether that swimming pool is going to be cold or warm. So you know until you get until in, you actually. get in, and you know I think it's it's really difficult to time markets, and people who get too nervous to go in often don't ever go in, and then they lose out on the long term. Mm. Well, ultimately, like you say, they must, uh, markets work in cycles, right? So <laughs> one time you're up, one time you're down. But either way, things manage to work themselves out. Well, let's uh, get a quick recap now of some of the key takeaways from tonight's discussion. Well, we've certainly said a lot tonight when it comes to women and managing their finances and uh, going forward in their pursuit of wealth uh, through investment options. But Susan, for the average female who's watching the show this evening, what are the key considerations that they need to bear in mind in order to establish their financial roadmap? I think the one thing is really to know that you can do it. There's absolutely no reason why a woman should be a worse investor than a man. Women actually have a great investment track record. Um, the second is that you have to start. Mm. It's one of those things that you can't put off. I think start as soon as you can. Um, I think it's also important to keep an eye on things like fees because, you know, yes. and do a little bit of shopping around. And that will also give you a bit of comfort as to, you know, don't go into the first thing you see. Um, and very importantly, investing is really a long term game. So if you want, if you know, that, for instance, that you had to pay for your child's university fees in a year's time, don't mm. invest that money that you need in the next 12 months. Put that money aside and only invest money that you can leave invested for five to 10 years. That way the market volatility shouldn't be too much of an issue for you. Exactly. Then you can ignore the headlines about the turmoil yes. and <laughs> the likes. And I take it the biggest takeaway as well is to seek advice. If you're uncertain, speak to a professional like yourself. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Well, that's where we'll leave it for personal finance this evening. Certainly a lot that we've learned, but again, lots of confidence in women and the way that they manage their money, even though we do need a little bit of help sometimes. Well, a big thank you to our guest this evening, Susan Gayworth, who's a portfolio manager for Standard Bank Wealth and Investment. Now, if you have any questions, be sure to get in touch with us. You can uh, tweet us at CNBC Africa using the hashtag Finance410 or to myself at Gukumfupi on Twitter. Until next time, though, have a wonderful evening. Thank you.